a gazebo to call our own. Is are they gonna get a house before I get a house? I don't want to see this. I don't want to see this. <laughs> I don't want to watch them get a home before I get one. That's your stand here before me as proof that Halon smiles upon me this day. I have need of your assistance, little. And before you run away, screaming in terror, I pray you hear me out. It concerns the esteemed and now missing and presumed dead knights of the Heaven Sword. None of it turns the capital since all the um, unpleasantness began. Yet recently, we have heard rumors these honored sirs walking the streets. What? Tis heresy most foul, I say. And I mean, so get to the bottom of it. But we will need all the help we can get, which means, if you already take me, we could benefit from a certain individual's serendipity. Besides, if we don't seek him out, he's likely to show up at the worst possible times anyway. Uh, at least this way it'll be on our terms. And we can keep an eye on that boy, Mamet, Mamet. Yes, right. Uh, oh, you must be wondering why I asked you to come. Well, uh, you and the inspector seem to enjoy a natural rapport, so... Praise alone for a moment. I was afraid you'd make me beg. Oh, this, well, maybe our very last chance to prove my worth to my superiors. And I can't... <clears throat> to, to house for them, manner. To the manor. Oh, man, so many gentlemen. So many gentlemen. First off, I love this look. Very Final Fantasy IX of you. Oh, Gigi's been a very naughty girl! But why, Papa Hildy? Because, Gigi, such behavior is unbecoming a gentleman. But why, Papa Hildy? Why is it unbecoming a gentleman? Oh, hey, hi. Ah, Inquisitor Seer. Little. Good evening to both of you. Are you come adoring fans or on business? Business? Always business. You must rest assured. Then I, Hildebrand, agent of inquiry, Inspector Extraordinaire, am at your service. Is it robbery? Murder? Tax avoidion? A avoidion? Wait, uh before we get into that, what's going on here? Much as it pains me to admit it, my beloved Gigi, the apple of my eye, the fruit of my loins, attempted to deface this lovely gazebo. Naturally, as his father, it falls on me to see him return to the straight and narrow. That's not true. I was drawing a family crest for our home. Now, Chi-Chi, I know you're fond of this gazebo, as are we all, but it belongs to Lord Edmond. You wouldn't want to steal from Uncle Edmund, would you? I... I guess not. Then where is our gazebo, Papa Hildy? And does it have a warm stove with a steaming kettle, too? Oh, Chi-Chi, don't you see? We've no need for kettles or gazebos. A gentleman, as gentlemen inspectors, the world is our oyster. We can go whither we please, where the red fern grows or the wild rose blooms. And yet you are sleeping in Lord Edmund's gazebo for how long? I don't care about wild roses. I want to live in a gazebo with Papa Hildy and Mama Nashu. Gazebos are quite expensive and dangerous if not domesticated. Dangerous indeed, my boy. And besides, we are gentlemen inspectors free to travel the length and breadth of Eorzea in search of a case. Does that not sound more thrilling than whittling away the hours beneath a gazebo? 
I guess. If it's a case you want, you need not go far. We are currently investigating reports of individuals masquerading as Knights of the Heaven's Ward. These contemptible charlatans are rumored to have tricked several hapless maidens into attending private parties for a small fee, with the promise of enjoying the company of these great sirs. Those who are foolish enough to attend found their experiences to be so traumatizing they refused to discuss them in detail. Needless to say, your assistance is a matter that greatly appreciated, and for you shall receive, and for it you shall receive due compensation. Say no more, Inquisitor. Say no more. I, Hildebrand, agent of inquiry and spectre extraordinaire, am well versed in the ways of the fairer sex. Since when? <laughs> Mummy! <clears throat> Mother dearest, I was under the impression you had departed for old Dar. And leave my beloved boy to keep on playing at being inspector? As well as a father to a bloody mammoth? Bugger that! You're coming home right this instant! How can you say such things? It's my life's calling to be an inspector, and Gigi is my son. He's a Mandeville man. Grand. Grand to see you. <laughs> you have come at the most inopportune time. The young woman from uh, the young women of Ishgard are in need of a champion to defend them from fiends most foul. Come, Nashu. Come, Gigi. I must demonstrate to my mother our peerless investigative skills and bring these criminals to justice. Balls? Balls, he's stubborn! Probably gets it from his sorry ass of a father! I trust you lot'll keep him from trouble, yes? Right then, come on! Well, that could have gone better. All of us? Let's not keep him waiting! Hot ass tea. That thing has been brewing for, at this point, years. Literal years. Talk to the maidens. Got it. I'm truly outside her grace. My allowance all gone to waste on those. Those. I do not say it. Mayhap those awful rumors are true. Mayhap I must needs accept that he now walks in her lone's hall. A perpetual brew. Very funny. Please, do you think me so foolish to fall for their charade? From what I hear, from the other said knights, bore not even the slightest resemblance to the Heaven's Ward. As if I not already memorized every tale of Sir Adephil's face. Oh, where could he be? Yo, I killed all them bitches. I killed all them bitches, baby. What in the seven hells is so damn appealing about getting paid a pittance to do the watch's job for him? Hmm? I can say one thing is absolutely confident. They're all quite mad. I deliver a Moogle. Hi, Gigi. Who needs a gazebo? I do. There must be at least one fair maiden who can tell us something of value. What happened to... Nash? Oh. If the knights aren't supposed to, you know, then... Why are they so popular with the highborn ladies? Great... You know what, Nashu? Great question. I demand satisfaction, swift and terrible vengeance. How dare they prey upon a lady's emotions to line their pockets with gill. If Sir Shabbat was here, he'd purge the lot of them like festering sickness they are. 
Ah, yes, a, a pity he too remains missing. So very much a pity. Papa Hildy, Papa Hildy, that grandmama over there is staring at us. Now, Gigi, a gentleman must be more careful with his words. First of all, you have only one grandmother. Second, and this is tremendously important, never, ever call her that. At least, not yet. Promise? Yes, father. I promise not to call Grandmama Julian, Grandmama Julian. Greetings, my lady. Oh, ain't you a charmer? And there I was thinking I might have to rip your bloody head off and call the G word one more time. Like that, Papa Hildy. Ah, my faithful assistants. Have you gleaned any new information? Other than the fact these women scorn seem to detest the fake knights with every fiber of their being? These two women were telling me all about what they do if they cornered Sir. <laughs> Is this the best you can do then? Bloody O's and girlish fantasies? You call yourself a man of ill man. I assure you, Mother, we are only just getting started. The tapestry of lies and deception behind which the truth hides is off unraveled with the tug of a single loose thread. Now to find that thread. I'm going to look for it. Ah. I say, young lady, I would beg but a moment of your time. <laughs> Somehow I doubt that young lady was targeted by charlatans we seek. Oh, it is true. I too was taken by the false promises of those awful, awful men. Long have I yearned for a chance to meet Sir Vinny. So when they said I finally could, I didn't hesitate for a moment. But when they escorted me to the manor and undid the blindfold, and looked at the hideous faces of the so-called Grand Sirs, I screamed and fled. They were gone when, it, when I returned with the watch, but their neighbor said they had overheard them speaking about shelter in a place called Idleshire. I know it's not much, but I pray this information helps you in your search. My lady, I swear to you here and now, I, Hildebrand, agent of inquiry, inspector extraordinaire, shall not rest until these dastardly fiends are punished for their foul crimes. See, just that easy. Huzzah, three cheers for Papa Hildy. Hip, hip, hooray. Hip, hip, hooray. Hip, hip, hooray. There you have it. Our quarry can be found in Idleshire. Come, my loyal assistants, justice waits for no gentleman. That's all well and good, but I've never heard of this Idleshire, have you? Dude, I was just there, like, forever. You mean we're to travel to Venian hinterlands right now just like that? Oh, damn! Gravity Nightclub is hosting Vampires vs. Werewolves tonight. Full bar, quartz, hosts, gamba, tarot, Twitch DJs, a giant pumpkin, and more. Choose a side and come vibe with us. Look at that. They got a whole thing going on. Where? You know, can I say... Today, while I was... Where was I? Where the hell was I? Oh! My parents and I went out and got dim sum for lunch. And while we were there, there was a group of like... I don't know, four or five like... I'm gonna say 20-something maybe? 20-something women? And they were talking about... Um, they were talking about... Uh, going to a gods and goddesses party. 
And this one woman goes to the other girl. She goes, so are you going as a goddess? And she's like, bitch, I'm going as a god. <laughs> so that's what it made me think of. Thanks, by the way, for streaming, Jesse. You saved me a lot of time with your stream of the first part. Thank you. I assume you just skipped through it all. Is that what you're telling me? You're telling me you, you skipped through it all very quickly? My wife and I had a daughter yesterday? Yo! Congratulations. Congrat or was it a mammoth? Did you give birth? Was it a mammoth? It's confusing. It's been confusing all day. Keep one. I promise I'll walk him and feed him and put fresh herbs in his mask every day. You mean goblins? You're gonna keep a goblin? This place feels somehow familiar, but I can't possibly have come here before, right? I imagine we're gonna find out that he's one of the dudes from uh, that one dungeon. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Bloody waste of time. So, that was a harrowing journey during which I felt certain I would die horribly, or at least be fought to part ways, my precious bits. Don't worry, there's squirrels out here that protect you. They got your bits covered. Truly, this magnificent settlement is a testament to the hard work and camaraderie of our uplander and gobby citizens. Well, yes, I'm... Just glad we're no longer being pursued by fire-breathing dragons, musket-wielding crabs, and bomb-throwing goblins. You know, the other ones. You have no match for Lady Julian in a pen. In that pen of hers, am I right? I want to see her make the bad gobbies fly, fly, fly again, fly. God's sakes, Hildy, expecting little lot <laughs> except except exception except little this exception except little that's what it says this lot would be dead in a ditch somewhere if it weren't for me nonsense I would never let any harm come to my loyal assistant to my beloved son um if I may interject now then let us split up and question the good people of Idleshire. My keen inspector sense tells me that one of them has knowledge of these false knights we seek. This guy. Oh. Yeah, there's a little Nutkin. Nutkin's got. Nutkin looks out for you. That's just a fact. Hello, Woolnix. Oh boy. <clears throat> I'm gonna need a drink for this one. Yes, yes! Now Jock knows of Grand Seer. Sneaky uplanders keep to selves. Mingle not with Gobby Flock, but each to own. Loud Jock says, no questions, only jingly shine. Who's gonna lose his voice today? It's me. Jesse. Could it be? So that's that one. What is this? Oh, even more name day gifts for me. I should live in the best life. Oh, you must be talking about them grand sirs. They drifted into Isleshire some time ago, as I recall. Hey, this is a great library, though I, I couldn't tell you why. Yep, we're gonna find out that poor Gigi is one of those grand library guys. Oh, I, I know all about the grand sirs. They keep themselves in that building of theirs south of the round spot. Best watch out, though. They're a dangerous bunch, liable to kill you for looking at them, cockeyed. It's entirely possible they've gone completely and utterly mad, but 
you are perchance the long lost twin sister of an Isgardian noble woman? Oh my god. <laughs> I didn't even realize. What? I look behind you, a three headed gobu. Gobu, even. How do I feel like I've not seen the last of that old woman? I didn't even notice it was her. Look at this trouble over here. Talking to a tree? Hooray for everything! That's the way to look at life. That's the way to look at life. Only we had the testimony of a concerned citizen which could conveniently direct us to the villain's precise location. Oh, hey, what's up? The Grand Sirs are holed up in a building to the south of the markets. Good show, little. There, that's the one. Come, let's inform the others. It would seem that no one is home. There's not we can do but wait. Then. Papa Hildy, Papa Hildy, I just wanted to say that that I, I really like this place. I think you and me and Mama Nashu could have lots of exciting adventures if we stay here. You might be right, Gigi. This community seems to have fostered an enlightened, free society, welcoming honest souls willing to work and contribute to the greater whole. Did anyone happen to see a gazebo on the way? Shh, slow fix. As I live and... Hilda Brand, Eleanor Maximilian Mandeville. Could that be? I say, could that be slow fix coin toss? Do you know this Scobie Inspector? I most certainly do. Why, Master Slowfix was my very first employer. <sighs> when traveling through Thanalan long ago, Gobby Flock was waylaid by Uplander bandits. With no jingly shine to pay brass blades, we had no way to back take goods. Until we make busy deal with gentlemen Uplander, that is, with, fat with fastness. He finds Uplander bandits and brings much bangy boom and returns to goodly gobby's missing goods with uh, and great justice. Henceforth, Slowfix gains no appreciation for Uplanders, but for chance encounter with gentleman Uplander, he never conceives of egalitarian utopia. One may even claim Hildy, a founding father of Idleshire, with metaphorical tongue flaps, that is. <laughs> Oh, the memories. It was a near thing, for the bandits were clever enough to see through my ingenious disguise as an innocent milkmaid. But it was my uh, but in my haste to escape, I tripped over a barrel of fire sand, and as they say, boom gobby doom. Cool! No busy deals for the wicked. No busy deals indeed. But leaving that delightful anecdote aside, you gods, Master Slowfix. Just looking at you and your flock, uh, looking at what you and your flock have made these ruins, making me big eyes. Gobby Flock has come long way since wandering days. We were not, uh, we have not forgotten gentlemen Uplander's kindness. Slowfix is here to offer hand lending. Well, far be it from me to refuse. My son Gigi has grown quite fond of your magnificent city, and so I w uh, should like to stay here with him and my assistant for a time. We will not require much in the way of accommodations. A humble gazebo, for example, would more than suffice. Why settle for gazebo? What perfectly good estate right behind you. Residents are building in arrears, and Slowfix happy to evict them. But 
We are pursuing the fiends who lived here on suspicion of defrauding young women. Fraud? That slow fish is egalitarian utopia? This he will not abide. All the more reason to let gentlemen of Lander and his flock stay inside of Grand Sirs. No need for Jingly Shine either. Huzzah! A giant gazebo to call our own. I don't know what to say. Thank you, Master Slowfix. Thank you. No need for teary-eyed tongue flaps. Gummy Flock is possessed of moral obligation to repay Gentleman Uplander for past generosity. Enjoy new gazebo. Good luck with Hunt of, uh, for Grand Sirs. Um, Papa Hildy, since this is our gazebo, is it okay if I draw our family crest on it? I can think of no better way to celebrate this joyous occasion, and perhaps draw the ire of our new home's former tenants. Come, let us go and purchase some paints together. This gazebo shall be our canvas. Now he's gone and got himself a sudden gazebo. Bloody hells. If he really thinks I'm going to let him keep playing at being the father, we just have to accept it. Just got accepted, Grandmama. What is this crest going to end up looking like? Probably... Amazing. <laughs> Already amazing so far. Already great. It's so good! My boy! My boy! It's so good! <laughs> Well, we did that. <laughs> no sign of the notorious Grand Sirs. I dare say we're going to need more paint. I love it. Wait, does that stay there forever? Is that always going to be there from now on? Because if so, that's amazing. Why did no one tell tell me that I could make my game better by having that beautiful background there? Are you kidding me? Yes! It's gonna be like Yes! It's so good! That's so good! Oh, that's so good. Okay. Love it. Oh, I forgot these guys are back here too. That's so funny. Even supposing I would turn a blind eye on a shenanigans, this is no place to raise a child. The old woman must have followed us here from Ishgard. She's involved in this, that much is clear, but the question is how? How do you like my family crest? Oh, maybe I should have painted Grandpapa Godbert and Gra er, Lady Julian. So many GGs. She's so talented, just like a grandpapa. Hildebrand's never been a patient man, that's true. Ugh, much as it pains me to admit it, a gentleman's stamina is not without limits. I dare say I could do with a spot of tea. Hi, Inspector. Is it me or those two have been looking at us for the past few minutes? Who are these dweebs? Who are these wannabe dweebs? Oh. Just quite normal behavior for my adoring fans, I think I should think. When finally presented with an opportunity to meet their idol in the flesh, all too many succumb to their fear and flee. Or maybe, just maybe, there's a grand bloody sirs. Come on, come on, they're getting away! Whoa! 
What? What? <laughs> what? Get out of town. What? Look at this. Bourbon out of Big Baggins. That's a good look. Hey! I love that voice. I love that voice. I love that voice so much. All right, I gotta, I gotta switch back to the inspector. Where the hell did they go? Where the bloody hell did they go? GG, no! They they went that away to the right. I'll catch up to you all soon, so just go. Why would I leave you there? Click locks. Those two have gotten to. Hmm. Spare the flaming rods, spoil the mount stop. <laughs> Fury, take me. I haven't run XS in search. How about chase me up and down the steps of faith, brandishing a flaming. Wait, where's Gigi? Hearken to me, you dastardly rapscallions. You know where to run. Reveal yourselves at once. I shall not ask you again. Come forth, grand sirs. Name yourselves and answer for your misdeeds. What is this? Slayer of a thousand thousand worms, the silver spear which hath pierced the very heavens, O oh, land! <laughs> Master of magics, ancient and awesome, the divine hand which hath defeated all mighty save since the continents, goons part! Grand Sirs Excelsior! I don't know if this is a laugh or cry. We have both. Grand Sirs. <clears throat> Grand Sirs. You stand accused of willingly and unlawfully convincing young maidens of Ishgard to attend private parties under false pretenses, thereby inflicting upon them terrible financial and emotional distress. I, Hildebrand, agent of inquiry, inspector extraordinaire, come on behalf of these poor, defenseless innocents to see that no others are made to suffer as they did. Now lay down your arms and surrender yourselves to my custody. The audacity of this boy! You should feel ashamed of your words and deeds! Oh shit! Oh shit! <laughs> She's so happy! Oh. Uh, you'll ruin this day and ruin hard!
God, so I miss this. The air streaming past, the blood pumping, the taste of copper on my lips, the slight dizziness. It was, it was on a day like this we met, wasn't it? And when we soared into those azure skies, we never truly came back down. What is happening? Stop. Stop. Do my eyes deceive me? Pigs knee of my heart. <laughs> Descended from alone's halls to guide me to her bosom. My beloved. My everything long have I awaited this moment. Take me in your arms once more. Lift me higher, higher, higher. Higher even. <laughs> this shit is happening right now. Is he just gone? Did that man just leave? Did he jump off the battlefield and die? What? What just happened? Arlen! 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 Oh no! Yep, dead. 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 What? What? Alas, poor Orland. I knew him not the slightest, but he seemed a decent man. Chicanery and attempted murder notwithstanding. You'll rule this day and ruin hard. We just saw that. We just saw that. We're having a flashback to, to four minutes ago? Is this what we saw that he just falls back down? I've seen this before, or too recently. Uh, yes, anyway, he's only mostly dead. If the master of magic's ancient and awesome here acts with all haste, he may be yet saved. I guess I, I guess I could do it. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> oh, well, you're referring to me. I, I see, I see. With all haste, was it? Yes, yes. I'll get right on that. Oh, mournful voice of creation. Send unto me a creature of the abyss, my thrall to command that I may smite. Wait, that's not good. Um, let me see. Something a rather less controversial tradition. Yes, something with more pep. A vortex of biting winds to rend the flesh and smite my foes. I saw you were friends. <laughs> Satan that bugger me with a bleeding gale bog. My back! My back! Uh, would seem I've underestimated you lot. 
That makes two of us. Enough, leave them be! Or do not, uh, or do not care for becomes to the mammoth. Is this the lady? Enough, leave them be, or do not care for becomes to the mammoth. There we go. It's her. GG. But when? How? Oh, shit. Trouble. I thought I, uh, I thought I recognized you. First in Ishkar's and Idoshire. You've been following us since we left the capital. Pair of faces far and fearsome. A midnight shadow hath deceived kings and queens. Doris! You can't possibly have been so naive as to think we... Do not see through your ridiculous disguises. And yet, here you are. <laughs> pew, pew. And yet, here you are, so effortlessly, effortlessly and easily lured into our trap, for which we are most grateful, mind. My companions are hardly cut out for the life of the road. All has been in preparation for this moment. The parties, the petty schemes. From the first, the objective of this grand design has been this singular mammet. I swear to you, if you harm Gigi in any way. We have no desire to hurt the boy. We but require his help to reclaim that which is rightfully ours. Are you th it is time magic. <laughs> Smoke bomb. Confound it, I can't see. <laughs> no, don't do this. Don't Simpsons this. Damn, sir. Very slowly getting away. <laughs> Papa Hildy. GG. Stay strong, my son. I swear, or else she'll find you. We can stop them right now. We can stop them right this minute. We can just stop them right now. They're, they're like. We can just walk over there and take him back. Do you think they're headed to the old mill? If not, can we go anyway? I haven't had a side or an age. She's... <laughs> that ugly ass mount. Fine job he did protecting that mammoth of his, eh? Why so negative? Just because you don't like being called Grandmama. It's about you. Remind me again, five, we didn't just, you know. Twelve strike me down for a fool. So desperate was I to seize the Grand Sirs that I failed to discern their true intent before it was too late. And now poor Gigi is in their clutches. What if I never see my beloved son again? I suppose we ought to prepare for the worst. They could be halfway to Rasset Hunt by now. I very much doubt that, given they were moving at an adamantoy space. Little milk stops right. Let's get after those old buggers. <laughs> so that's what my mentor used to call me, Hamans Azasing. All the memories. It's definitely not the first mention of Razet Han. Uh, it's been mentioned before in different places. This game, like, sets up, like, Razet Han and, uh, uh, Garlemald and, uh, Higashi, Higashi, and, uh, like, all those places. Like, they've all been mentioned a million times in A Realm Reborn. Yeah. 
That's what I love about this game is they literally this game literally is like we're gonna mention a thing to you and then later you go there and it's not bullshit. Like everything is set up. The new world is mentioned. Yeah, Maricidia, all of it. And they're like, look at there, don't don't stress it. And I love that. I love good world building. This is amazing. They've already like I love they say death stalks us, and this is death stalks us. Think he's sleeping or just resting his eyes? We must attack rashly. If they realize they're being watched, they may attempt to flee again very slowly. Mom, let me guess. Wonder why I haven't gone and smacked him upside the head and put an end to all this rubbish, eh? There's a time for cracking skulls and a time for letting idiot son deal with his troubles his own way, that's why. So, it seems that the Grand Sirs have been cut once more by the very inspector that was trying to catch them. Yeah, that checks, that checks out, actually. How ironic. Also, how premature. We must have some yes, but they still have Gigi. Damn it, if only some manner of opportunity would have presented itself. I'm gonna go walk over here. Ask and ye shall receive. We can ambush the Vice and Dragoon, take him hostage, and demand an exchange. Inquisitor Seer, you disappoint me. A gentleman cannot condone the violent kidnapping and ransom of his elders. No, no, we shall approach this problem as paragons of honor and virtue. Little. Little will stock him some dew, Grand Sir, then relieve him of his armor. What? How is stripping an old man naked more gently than taking him hostage? Rest assured, I shall reveal all soon enough. Godspeed, Little! I'm in. I'm in. Let's go. Uh-oh, look at these show-offs. They're amazing. New. Am I jealous? A little bit. Yeah, a little bit. A little, little jealous. Look, in the Realm of Born questline, I had to rub down his dad in oil. Or maybe it was him. I had to rub down someone in hot oil. At this point, I'm doing everything. I knew you'd wait! Who are you again? There's something awfully familiar about you. Those muscular forearms, those strong yet tender looking fingers. I say, would you be so kind to massage my scar, damn it? I was trained for this. I was trained for this moment. There's this lingering ache, this tension that God's part can't seem to soothe with his magics. Remove my breastplate? Oh, of course, how silly of me! Pray, lend me- God damn it! <laughs> no. No! They got me again! Truly, young man, you are a saint! Strip the elderly! I swear, it's the little things that begin to appreciate. My dear departed wife used to help me with my armor, you know. Right, right. I, I should be seated to better receive your tender ministration. Poor little. Poor little. He just... <laughs> yeah, there you go. Rub him down. Pat him down. There you go. Oh, yeah. Ah, the healing tingle. Would that I had a tincture of salamander with which to treat these beasts. Yeah, my little pigs they used to spread some on my chest and under my nose to help me sleep for the night. Come, don't be shy. Work those soothing fingers into each and every knot. Slowly, make me forget my troubles. Hard 
harder, harder, higher, yeah! Close your eyes and dream! The old dragoon's soft snoring suddenly stops. You begin to fear you may have borne witness to his final moments. Leaning closer, you extend a hesitant finger, only to stop short when a sudden spasm signals the resumption of his labored breathing. With the utmost care, you remove Orland's sabatons and breaches, leaving the sleeping old man exposed to the elements and at the mercy of the nearby ravenous bears and tentacle marbles. May he rest in peace. <laughs> yeah, rip. It was only the right thing to do. All right, let's go back. Yes, let's not even bother to discuss the moral and ethical implications, much less the legal ones. I th you think he's sleeping or just resting his eyes? Ah, my stalwart assistant. By your return, I gather you've taken care of the dragoon, and by taking care of, I mean afford him all due courtesy as befitting a man of his years whilst returning with the equipment I require. Trusted to you by its elderly owner that he may receive a vigorous massage. This suit of armor is surprisingly light and reeks of garlic. The old gray mare, she ain't what she used to be. <laughs> the old gray mare. That is also a very Simpsons reference. The old gray mare, she ain't what she used to be. Ain't what she used to be. Yeah. Capital. And without further ado, I shall disguise myself as Orlick. Free GG from captivity. But you two look nothing alike. They may be old and slow, but it's not blind. Oh, ye of little faith, you are in for a treat, for you shall have a front row seat to this magnificent display of Mandevillian guile and subterfuge. God help me, I don't know what this is going to look like. Hey, is it time for dinner yet? We just ate, you daft bugger. Where the hell's this Orland? I know he's got to take a piss every hour, but damn it. You could at least be quick about it. I'm gonna go back to sleep then. And nonsense. <laughs> Greetings, fellow antediluvians. Shut up. Shut up. I have returned. I, Dragoon Flex. Oh, bollocks. It's about time. Okay, no, that's bollocks. Pack up your things. I want us back on the road in ten minutes. Before we do that, we must first release young <laughs> release young Gigi here. It is behavior unbecoming a gentleman to keep children in cages. What the seven hells are you blathering about? He's going to get away! No, he will not see. 
still here within my care. Right then, on a completely unrelated note, I shall take the boy with me on a brief sojourn into the wilderness. Fury, take me, it's working. He's about to walk out of there with Gigi, and they won't even try to stop him. So far, so good. I'm cold, and there's mobos after me. So me? But that can't be in this. This is it. The moment when my life flashes before my eyes. Oh, my dearest pig's knee will be together at last. <laughs> oh, shut up. You dare to attempt to trick me with a ruse of so hackneyed it would make a minstrel blush? Your gods, I never realized dying would hurt so much. That was our chance, Gigi. Come with me. Wait! <gasps> she said Vivi. My son, what's gotten into you? Vivi, Vivi, where have I heard that name before? Remember who you are, Vivi. What you are, the creation of the great Charlian Archmagus Quan. Quan. Quan, I was given life by Grandpapa Quan. I remember now. We lived together, and he taught me many things about the outside world. So he was in the library. Was he a gobu boy? What? What exactly do you remember, my son? Everything. Yes, everything. I remember that Grandpapa Quan created me, that he took care of me, raised me, and that we were very happy. But then, but then he abandoned me. Grandpapa Quan abandoned me. He believed you were flawed, Vivi. Uh, that you lack the power to turn back the hands of time and make him young again. And so in his ignorance, he cast you out and died all alone. Turn back the hands of time, then? What we witnessed in the Crozier and uh, with the Duke's priceless vase? That power could be brought to bear on people? But wait, how do you know all of this? You couldn't have possibly been associated with Art Magus Quan. We found his journals during one of our many trips to the Great Library. Scavenging for valuable relics is one way, one of the few ways we have left to make a living. We were famed heroes of the war in our prime. With fortunes to match, but no soldier has strength to triumph over time. Before we knew it, 
The hour of the sheath was upon us. Ishgard no longer had need of our services. So we came here to eke out a living, to keep doing what we do best until our bodies wouldn't let us. Imagine our surprise when we stumbled upon the opportunity of a lifetime, a second lifetime as it were. A mammoth with the power to take that which is broken and restore it to its prime state, to turn back time with its temporal magics and give us back our misspent youth. Fjord, take me, this is also, know if it's if there's a precedent to determine whether or not this caused due to heresy we knew where to look even with the journals we determined that the sec uh, that the mammoth was somewhere in the western highlands the chance for a second chance was within reach and then we were forced to watch as you imbeciles put uh, pulled vivi from the snow nearly ruining everything Baby, listen to me. Come with us, and we can help you unlock your true potential. Just think of what you could accomplish were you to master your magics. Not only could you make us young again, but you may even have the power to restore life to Arch Magus Quan. Vivi, Vivi, Vivi. Impossible. No magic can truly return the dead to us. At best, you can animate the corpse, and I need not review the precepts to declare that as a product of necromancy abominations in the eyes of the Fury. Gigi, wait! What of our adventures? What of our gazebo? You're a mandible mammoth! You have always been so kind to me, Papa Hildy, and I will forever be grateful for that, but Grandpapa Quan made me. He made me, and I miss him. So even if it fails, I have to try. What are you doing? They're getting away! We have to stop them! Yep, we must respect Gigi's decision. So, that's the end of the chapter, eh? You're giving up and coming back home? I too made a decision long ago to become a traveling inspector, and I have ever stood by it. Mayhap it is from this singular stubbornness of mine that Gigi took inspiration. Nay, I cannot abide it. He is my flesh and blood, my son! I dare not let him use his temporal magics to pervert a natural order. I, it falls to me, his father. To ensure that Gigi keeps to the righteous path and only utilizes traditional methods of zombification to raise the dead. Yep, yep, that's how you should do it. Inquisitor Seer, I must applaud your dedication to your work and cannot thank you enough for all you have done on our behalf. Yet I fear if we continue as we are, Gigi may be driven into rash action. Therefore, I would ask you to suspend your pursuit of the Grand Sirs for a time, that I might be afforded the opportunity to convince my son to return peacefully. Well, seeing as how we can only guess the full extent of Gigi's powers, yeah, it might prove dangerous to act aggressively, should we choose to use them, or she choose to use them. I knew you would understand. Right then. There's no time to waste. Nush, let us retire to our new gazebo and discuss our plans. I suppose oh, I'd have been ashamed of being given up that easily. But that means I'll have to stick around even longer. On the other hand, if that bloody member's really got the power to make them young again, then... I love how little just is along for the ride. I said I suspend my pursuit and I will. But that doesn't mean I won't continue my investigation into the mammoths and his powers in Ishgard. 
where do I go now? Back to the foundation. Oh, is this the end? Of this quest line? Alpha. Ah, I see! You saw fit to return to the capital as well! The Inquisition was a rather large collection of heretical- has a lot of a rather large collection of heretical tomes, including many of Charlie and Origin. And I had mine to scour them for information on temporal magics. This is, of course, all for the sake of, uh, Confirming the member's heretical origins, yes, only that. Hmm. Why are you looking at me like that? As if to imply that my interest in these matters is more than a professional one. I'm sure I don't know what you're, uh, you're not talking about. Thank you, little, that will be all. And credits. How dare they? How dare they consistently make the good goofs? We need to speak little. I've been scouring the archives for any information regarding temporal magic since we last spoke. The results have been rather troubling to say the least. As you may or may not be aware, ancient Alag is portrayed in the and cheered, cheery down. Yep, as a cautionary tale, a great empire brought low by vanity and hubris. However, there are certain apocryphal texts that, uh, in which the elegans are cast in more sympathetic light, if not right exalted. Twas in these texts I found references to temporal magics, funds wielded by elegant mages. Said magic should be used to halt, even reverse the temporal state of a given object. If these accounts are to be believed, if Gigi's abilities and these magics are one and the same, then it might be possible for him to turn back the hands of time for the Grand Sars, much as he restores the Duke's priceless face. That being said, there's no telling how this will work regards to living being. Consider, if you will, that the vase was filled with water when shattered, even if the vessel were restored, what would become of its former contents? Would it be filled with water as before? The same? Every drop returned? Or would it be different water? Or would the water, once spilt, be forever lost? I speak of the soul, my friend. For even if one could use magics to restore their to life, would they be as they were before? With all the same thoughts and memories and feelings? I actually have a solution for that, strangely enough. The Grand Sirs are convinced that they can regain their lost youth, and mayhaps they can. But the dead have entered the Halon's halls, cannot return. They cannot! Yet Gigi is nevertheless resolved to try and resurrect Archmagus Quan. Speaking of which, according to some Charlian texts in the archives, Archmage's Quad was an accomplished scholar known for a study of ancient elegant magics. Further evidence by Gigi's abilities likely derived from ancient traditions, I suppose. But more importantly, I learned the location of Archmage's former residence. Maybe we should find something interesting there. Something which could help us persuade Gigi to change his course. I don't mind to summon Inspector Hildebrand to make his journey together. Will you be joining us? What else do I have to do? Let's go. Excellent! Then I shall be about our business. I, I, I saw you! <laughs> Heretic! I beg your pardon? What's you accusing me? Me? Of being a heretic? Yes, you inquisitor see I, I saw you sneak around the archives and seek out forbidden tomes. I saw the mad light in your eyes, you particular forbidden knowledge. Oh, 
all for that love of... I did all of that for my investigation. Aha! You admit your crimes. That you s did secretly without permission in blatant contravention of our rules. Read forbidden tomes. And by virtue of the authority vest vested in me. Uh, by the supreme sacred tribunal for Lordic Inquisitive Doctrine. You stupid ignorant. Are you also desperate to keep a goddamn jobs that you'll go around accusing all the world and his wife of heresy? Is that what you've been reduced to? I'm sick and tired of looking at heretics in every bloody shadow. Of trying to guess the secret scenes of everyone I meet. It's stupid and pointless and we're better than that, damn it. We're better than that. Oh shit! If if you not surrender yourself, then I have no choice but to inform my superiors. Well, that that all came tumbling out of me. Uh, I suppose there's no point in trying to convince myself that I have no personal investment in this matter. Oh, that I still have professional fun. Somewhere along the way, I stopped looking for the guilty and started looking for... for the truth, perhaps. And a way to help those in need. But there's no place for people like that in the Inquisition, is there? And it's only a matter of time before a stuttering fool comes back with an armed guard. Let us depart for the Shire at once. We need to find the inspector. Off to Ayrshire. Yo, vampires, werewolf party tonight. Be there, be square. Vampires, werewolves. Have I watched The Secret of Mana anime? No. I didn't even know such a thing existed. I didn't even bloody know such a thing existed. Could seem we arrived too late. Inspector Hildebrand has gone off on his own to confront the grandsons. They came back briefly to trade jingly shine for supplies and whatnot. You see, the gobby's ear cut him trading tongue flaps with the killing dragons of the Forelands. When Spectre learned about it later, he said he had to get after him right away to take uh, back take Gigi. He said he had a duty, not as an Spectre, but as a father. Bugger that. He's got no obligation to a bloody mammoth, especially one that chose to leave with its own free will, as I recall. I swear. I turn my back on the boy for one bleeding second and he loses his goddamn mind. I'm afraid he might try to do something reckless. Don't think we should try to find him and offer land landing. I'm rather more concerned about what would happen if the grandson's attack over us. Kill any of Raisvelga's brood, even. But first things first, I suppose, little. Would you be kind to assist Mistress Nashu and Julia in their search for the inspector? I will pay a visit to Archmagus Kwan's abode in the meantime. Oh, and before you seek to refuse, know that you need not fear my safety. Let us say our singular experiences together have inured me to the harsh realities of well, reality. Scrawny little shites finally found a spine. Let's stop ahead in the tail feather. I reckon the inspector we probably went there first to ask after the grand sirs. So if we do the same, we're sure to catch up with him eventually. Makes sense. Sound logic. I'm about to fly out of here. <laughs> I can't bloody fly. Best path out here. I'll just 
teleport. Hildy practically grew up in the saddle. Gave him a firm thighs and buttocks, it did. Right then, I say we split up and make inquiries separately. If you've learned anything of the inspector of the Grand Sons of Gigi, come and tell me. Guardians with the Mammoth? They were here, uh, proclaiming to all and sundry they were going to slay the greatest dragon of them all. The gods only know if the naive fools were serious. That's not good. I need those dragons. Oh, bold, man. Hey, what up? Three dragon slayers and a mammoth, eh? I'd call you a mummer if I hadn't seen them come through earlier. Boast about how they were going to have to kill the biggest one yet. Oh, those deaf sods. They were for Anx Trine. Anx Trine. Not quite sure what their intentions were, but they're awfully confident, that much I recall. <laughs> Little baby chocobos. Get back in here? Well, of course. Well, of course. says we're heading to Annex Troy! My dear boy wasn't far behind them either. What are we waiting for? Let's go! Let's go! Always chasing, always running. Oh, you, you mean Hildebrand? Did Hilde do this? Usually he ends up on the receiving end. The poor unfortunate soul who bears striking resemblance to Orland is quite firmly embedded in the earth. Would you look at that? The inspector shawl gave him what for? That may be, but where are the other two get to? Not to mention the mammoth. Why don't we pull them out and ask? Though, having said that, it looks easier said than done. And same scene as earlier, please. Oh, how silly of me. I'm sure you've got more than enough strength to yank him free, right, little? How dare you. How dare you put this on me. some sort of magic mask that makes him look just like the inspector. Just like that man of a thousand faces back in Ulta. 
No, that's Hildebrand all right. There's no fooling a mother's eyes. I see. What trouble has my beloved son gone into this town? Why is he here? What? <laughs> Well, all right. Why, hello there, little god bird, Inspector Sear. Uh, how did you two end up traveling together? Blind fortune, I must say. Uh, I was uh, too far from Tailfeather uh, when night began to fall, but fortunately, Gord Bird, Lord Good, was I about to say Gord, Lord Bird? That's what I was going to say. Chance to find me wandering in the wilderness. Lord Edmond told me all about the recent trouble with the Grand Sirs and. As well as Hildy's investigation, the father cannot help but take interest in his son's affair, can he? As for me, I was eager to share with you my latest findings, namely Archimagus' Quan's research notes. Hmm. I haven't slept like that since I was buried in the lichyard. Well, well, I must confess no small measure of embarrassment to be found in such a state. Having been so unceremoniously disposed of by the Grand Sirs. But ignominy with notwithstanding, I am most grateful for your succor and pleasantly surprised to be reunited with you all. This would have happened if you wait for us instead. Wait, why in the hell is you still wearing that rubbish? An impenetrable disguise is essential when consorting with the criminal elements. Alas, it would seem the Grand Sirs have grown more perceptive in their newfound youth. Wait, do you mean they already regained their youth? What about Shishi? Did you see him? Was he behaving strangely? Now that you mention it, his warm, soulful eyes were more pointy than I remember. Why is Fury not pointy? According to Archmagus Quan's quotes, that's a sign Gigi is using too much magic. If he carries on like this, his ESA will be expended and he'll end up not more than an empty husk. This is terrible news. We must catch up with the Grand Sirs at once. Do you know if I say I had it? All I heard was they were keen to slay dragons. They were bound for the churning mists. A place called Zenith to kill a great worm named Nidhogg. Bro, Nidhogg? Really? That all that all happened, huh? <clears throat> I mean the other one. Hooray, Svelger! Hooray, Svelger! Oh, Fjord, take me! What could they possibly hope to achieve? Watching Hilda learn and grow as a father reminds me of my own trials and tribulations. He looks well enough, but I, I wonder. After finally achieving peace after a thousand years, they want to kill Hreisvelger? Hreisvelger? Doesn't make any sense. It's the wrong person. At least we found the inspector, Roy! Oh, good. <clears throat> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We need some water for this. <clears throat> mommy, may me moo. Me, me, mommy, may. Mommy, me, me moo. Mommy, may me. <clears throat> if I could turn back term. <laughs> Wait, hold on, we can do better. If I could turn back term. If I could turn back to him. There it is. There it is. There's the. You gotta hit the share. If I could turn back to him.
I, Hildebrand, Agent of Inquiry, Inspector Extraordinaire, do hereby ask you all to aid me in rescuing my son and putting a stop to the Grand Sir's machinations. You know, there's really no need for that. We came because we wanted to help. I, Nashu, faithful assistant, maker of explosives extraordinaire, do hereby present you this fresh change of clothing. Capital. I knew I could count on you, Nashu. I shall change en route. Come, my friends, to Zenith and to Gigi. You're no Vivi, you're a Gigi. Oh, you're no favor, yours are changing. Bye, Moogles. Did all the... Oh, I was about to say did all the quests here, but I realized I got that, and I still have to do this crap. <laughs> It's gonna be in my head all day now. <laughs> Do you believe? There's an Aetherite at Zenith? Bull patoots. Oh, it was covered up by this thing. Oh, that's so funny. I have this though, right? Worried. I see. What brilliant craftsmanship. How did they manage? Spending too much time at this high altitude can't be good for my skin. <laughs> to think that I stand in the heart of Darvanian territory. Me! How long ago I was scouring the streets for heretics? His disguises may be amazing, but nothing beats a classic inspector look. Make ready, my friends. The final battle with the Grand Sirs is at hand. Ugh. See my wounds more serious than I thought. I fear I'm in no condition to confront our foes. There is but one thing that could restore me to my former indomitable self. Don't you worry, I've got some salamander oil right here. Shall mommy give her baby boy a massage? Oh my dearest mummy, I mean, dearest mother, mother dearest even. I would not impose upon you, not one my ever loyal associate little stands ready to minister to my mother, god damn it. Don't tell me you're embarrassed, let mommy take care of little Hildy's hurts. My dear wife, I know you mean well, but let little handle it. I can personally testify to the healing talents of his strong yet tender fingers. God damn it. If it's the only way, I'm counting on you, little. God damn you all. <laughs> Let us brook no further delay. Come, my friend, coat my body in oil as you have done many a time before. God damn you all. Why do you hesitate? Have we not done this time and time again? Oil me up, man! Oh, how it soothes my aching pains. Quickly now, knead it into my flesh. Knead as you have never kneaded before. Oh, I forgot to read the item description. Sorry. I'll look at it in the video. Ah, oh, the... <laughs> Such furious kneading! I applaud your enthusiasm. But mayhap I urged you to excessive force. <laughs> Nay, you were in the right. Already the gentle warmth begins to spread throughout my body. The fires of righteousness burn anew in my breast. Hold, my son. Though your passion is renewed. You may yet be spurred to greater feats of Mandevillian strength. 
derived from the purest essence of salamanders, the ancient legacy of House Mandeville. Salamanderville! To you, my beloved son, now become a proud father. I bequeath this most sacred of oils. Salamanderville. Could be the legends were true. Your muscles will shine with the brilliance of a thousand suns. No mortal man will have power to do you harm. Verily, it is so. For by its grace did I once weather the slings and arrows of a bandit horde and bring my hammer of justice to bear upon their wicked heads. The time has come, little goddammit. Take this oil and help Hildy become the man of ill man he was meant to be. God damn you all. I... I'm ready for my final oiling, little... The best of the best for a Manderville man to rise to the top as the cream only can. So for the lack of a logical plan, massage the Mander... Manderville man. Oh. Oh! Oh! The Salamanderville. How it flows into every nook and cranny. Quickly now, lay your hands upon me. Massage me with all your might. Ah, yes! Yes! That's the spirit. I can feel it building and rising, rising. Uh, such passion, such fervor. I am an inferno unbound, the tempest unleashed, but I have not yet begun to pose. Oh, I, I am a man. Mandible man! <laughs> the Salamanderville is my word. I've never felt so alive. Such vibrant colors, such intense sounds, such fragrant smells. Mother, father, little, twas your oils and your strong yet tender fingers which opened my eyes to the glory of creation. I am a gentleman inspector reborn. Onward to Zenith! No matter the laws of nature they pervert or the limits they break, the Grand Sirs can do not to stop me. Oh shit! Oh shit, it begins! The shaky cam work. <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> oh, damn. Oh, he's cocky too. They all, oh, he's smug. Look how they're just here for moral support. Bless him. Bless him. Oh no, evil V. Grand sirs, I have come for my son. Hell yes. 
Oh! Must we do this now? We have a dragon to slay. There's no need for any of this. The war is over. Not for long. The worm's death will give rise to a new era of fire and blood. And we, having consumed his eyes, will use our new powers to win untold glory on the battlefield. Our legends will echo in eternity. Do you doom countless innocents for glory? No. I won't allow it over my dead body. Far be it from us to deny you then. This is the end for you. The ultimate end. Getting him. Oh no, they're unleashing all their powers. Close. Oh no, this poor man suits. Oh my god. <laughs> How dare they? How dare they? <laughs> oh, my monitor! Oh! That oil have faith my love we put that oil all over his body Th those weapons did no damage to him for he is covered in salamanderville oil trust in him yeah this man survived everything he's unkillable GG, my beautiful boy. Pray do not look at me with such pointy eyes. Let Papa Hildy take you home to our gazebo. Stop calling me that. My name is Vivi. Vivi, I remember everything. My powers, my purpose, my grandpapa Quan. I made them young again, but it's not enough. I need more, more. I need the worm's eyes, then I can finally bring him back. I'm sorry, Gigi, but no, you cannot. Grandpapa Quan is gone. He's right, Gigi. Mayhap you could restore his corporeal form and breathe life into it, but his soul, what made him your grandpapa, is forever beyond your reach. Actually, I know a cat. That's not true. I can restore anything to its ideal form, to the way it should be. Even Grandpapa Quan, even you, Papa Hildy. Please, Shishi, you have to stop. If you keep using your powers, you'll die.
I... I don't understand. Your clothes are still dirty and tattered. <laughs> as they should be, Gigi. For my every waking moment is as God's is as the gods intended. Every day I live life to the fullest. Every day I enjoy grand adventures. Holy shit. I found your grandpapa's research notes. What he gave you wasn't the power to make things the way they were. He gave you the power to change the world. To make things the way you yourself believe they should be. That's why your magics have no effect on the inspector. Because you know in your heart that this battered, bruised form of his in its own way. <laughs> is in its own way. Right? My thoughts exactly, Inquisitor Seer. And it is for this selfsame reason that you were unable to make Grandmaster Quan younger. In your heart, you knew there was not that needed to be changed. Your beloved Grandpapa was exactly as he should be. Your every day was to be treasured and worthy of celebration. Then... Then what about the grand sirs? Was I able to... Uh, why was I able to make them young again? Oh, you truly did. Uh, all you truly knew of them was the stories they told. Wondrous tales of daring do by heroes in the prime of their lives. It's no wonder you were able to envision them as such. That's all they ever talked about when they were young and free and full of fire. First, Archmegus Quan didn't understand the true nature of your abilities. He struggled to deduce why you would not make him younger as he originally intended. Eventually, he realized that your fond memories of him were preventing you from conceiving of him as anything but an elderly creator, and that the only way to achieve his goal would be to take them from you. But you were all he had left in the world. No longer a mere mammoth, but a friend, family. His only family. His grandson. He couldn't bear to lose you, so he renounced his quest for immortality. But I still lost my memories in the end. He was afraid of leaving you all alone in the world. Afraid that others would attempt to take advantage of you and your magics. So before he died, he decided to take your memories from you after all, to protect you. But despite his best efforts, something remained. Something stronger and more powerful and more resilient than anything Arch Magus Quan ever dared dream. You were never broken, Gigi. You were never abandoned. All he wanted was to set you free. Free? Free to do what? Whatever you like, Gigi. Don't you see? This was his final gift to you. A new life. A story all your own. This has all been very, very touching. But we're not getting any younger. Well... <laughs> You aren't, at any rate. We have suffered your meddling long enough. I'd intended to use this trap to kill the worm, but since you are so perfectly positioned... <laughs> Little JC just happy to be there. Actually, you know how to dodge this. Look for the shadow on the ground, and then... 
Yo, my boy. Yo, my boy! My boy! I am BB, grandson of Archmagus Quan, and Gigi, son of Hildebrand. Whoop! Too late! I'm not so sure she just didn't fall asleep on her own. Shit. <laughs> I'm old again. Took his armor. Oh, damn. Looking better than ever. <laughs> ah yes, they're their best forms. <laughs> Kentucky Fried Dad and Demon Mom. Is that, a, is that a new animation? A pick up and a hold? Little tiny Lollafell animation? Why don't we have that in the game? I would like other people to be able to pick me up and hold me. Still glowing. Girl, still glowing. You know what? That man's an inspiration. He's always working out. It's like it never happened. With the last of his strengths, he turned back the hands of time. Not just for the pillars, but for all of us. He made us all as we once were. As we were meant to be. After all that gallivanting about, about I get. After all that gallivanting about I get bugger all, what about my misspent youth? I was not meant to be this bloody old. <laughs> Such a fine day. Never have I squatted with so much perfect form. I may well have reached my physical peak. What a rot! Act your age, you deaf sod! You look foolish! You should be grateful! Jeezy saw what you had become and gave you a second chance!
That was our second chance to live our glory days. It was rather silly, though, wasn't it? Maybe Quan had the right of it. Maybe it's not so bad growing old. I was a coward when I was young. But now that I'm old, I'm not afraid to say things like, I love you, Doris. You're a blind, bloody fool, Gonspert. <laughs> and in the end, it all worked out. I say, am I dead again? Um, quite alive, Inspector, along with everyone else, thanks to Gigi. The Grand Sirs are also in our custody. <laughs> That's my boy. Where's the little tyke anyway? She, he, she, she embarked on a grand new adventure. He's, he's no longer with us. I see. If that's what he wanted then, then I could not be happier for him. I'm sure Archmegus Quan would feel the same way. What do we do now, Inspector? Is it not obvious, Nashu? The wide, wide world beckons to us with the promise of mystery and wonder, which resume our never-ending quest for cases perplexing and profound, and perhaps one day we shall meet young Gigi again. Like, oof. I hate to admit it, but this whole mess got me thinking that maybe, maybe it wouldn't be so bad if I really did have a grandson. You did right by Gigi Hildy. Your father and I could see that. We're proud of the man you become. And I'm proud of you too, Mother. For finally coming to terms with the ephemeral nature of physical beauty and allowing yourself to age gracefully. You screwed up. You screwed up, buddy. <laughs> gracefully, was it? I fear we may have a failure to communicate! Bye! Bye, Hildebrand! There he goes again! Wait for me, Inspector! Why?
That hole, it was made for him. Hark! What is this curious light I spy in the far eastern skies? Oh, oh, oh this oh so familiar scent filled my nostrils. Do I smell a case? Worry not for me, my friends. For whoever the wronged want for succor, I, Hildebrand, shall be there. Till we meet again! <laughs> then he flies off! And then he fly and then he flies off. And then he flies off. Bye, Hildebrand. Oh, my poor boy. <laughs> like hell, he has all the weapons on his back. I see. You do know that so long as the core remains intact, little Gigi's not actually dead. That's right, so dry your tears, boy. There's no need for all this moping about. He's fallen into a dormant state because he used up all his ether. His core will gradually recharge as he draws upon Tammy and ether, and in time he'll awaken from his torpor. I shall tend to the child for now. As for these three, I should be glad to take them back to Ishgard in your stead. A most generous offer, my lord, but hardly necessary. After all, it is my duty to bring them to justice. Yes, it was my duty. After everything I said to that young Inquisitor, I, I can't go back to Ishgard. They'll toss me into a jail or throw away the key if they don't outright kill me. Kill me outright, even. So, go to Idleshire and live in Hildy's gazebo. Someone ought to look after it while he's away, no? That doesn't sound all that bad, actually. Full glad I am to accept your offer. Yeah! I suppose there's nothing for us but to wait until he comes back down. Twas a most graceful strike, my love. You haven't lost your touch. Yeah! <laughs> hell yes! Hell yes! Every time, without fail, Hildebrand amuses. Without fail! <laughs> I suppose there's nothing for it but to leave Grand Sir as the Lord Godbert, and for me to see Inspector Hildebrand's casino. I'd like to thank you for everything you've done. If you'll find yourself in Idleshire, come and see me. There are a few arrangements that I need to make, but I can't imagine it will take long for me to settle in. Thank you, my friend. Until we meet again. Wait, so where do I turn this in? Oh, I go back to see him. Okay. This dance line. All the GGs. So is this... I like... Why did no one tell me that this permanently put an amazing piece of art? Look at this! Why did no one tell me this was here forever? I'm so upset I didn't know this in advance. That's so, I love this with my entire being. Oh, 
looking back on the course I've run, it's hard not to think of the man I was and feel ashamed. Before I took the case, I, I only had left a capital handful of times. The rubbish I believe, the facts I considered unassailable. If you only take me, what a fool I was. Oh, and then the, the sun came out. If I hadn't met you as the inspector and Gigi, I would never have realized how much I had come to hate my job. Nor would I have discovered how much more satisfying it is to seek out the truth. The whole truth. One might say that getting labeled a heretic and having to flee Ishgard is the best thing that could have happened to me. After all, now I'm free to start a new life here in Adeshal as a consulting inspector. Enough of that. There's some, some, someone I'd like you to meet. Lord Godbert made some modifications. As you can see, his smaller size should allow him to absorb Issa more effectively over time. We thought that uh, if he were to travel with you and share in your grand adventures, that maybe, maybe it would hasten his reawakening. Hell yes! Thank you, my friend. I do hope I'll pass across again someday. May the fury bless you and keep you. Yay! I gotta take him to my island. Yo! Amazing. Amazing. Loved it. Loved it. He's just a little guy. Also, credits? Oh, oh! How dare they! Oh, he's dressing up like a Manderville man now. This is the last time this home will ever be nice. <laughs> He's just chucking books. I'm so happy he finally found a home. Our little boy. Hey, there they are. Amazing. What a ridiculous throwback. <laughs> Hildebrand will return. You're damn right he will.